Um, yes. So, so, uh, what we're going to do first is uh, jump over to uh, my left on the screen and well chat who would you like to who who would you uh, uh, do you want blue do you, do you want a blue star or do you want a red or a, or a kind of more pinky star what what's chat feeling like just now we've got a couple of blue characters in here um and we've got We've got a very red-haired. Any anybody? Anybody? Anybody got any? No, that's good. So, um, polka dot says me on Nerva. Um, I think that's I think that's Russ. Russ has got the most dotty costume on. I think. Yeah, definitely. Elves can wear tie dye. Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do? Uh, we're going to introduce Ildry and Russ, uh, Russ's character. So let's jump over and have a look. Um, I'm playing Ildry. She's a high elf wildfire druid. And she's kind of the party healer slash keeping things as a little bit less chaotic than what they might normally be. But we'll find that out. Um, I'm not really sure how to start this. So, <laughs> um, she runs a pub normally in Neodra called the Twisted Tap Trees but now she's adventuring with the rest of the Shadow Rings on behalf of the Shadow Wolves yes so there's a couple of bits of of the things that I'm going to point out there uh, to everybody at home um, you heard the ownership of a pub so listen out for that one uh, you mentioned um, the Shadow Wings, which is the name of your group, but they're part of the Shadow Wolves, and I'll explain a little bit more about them. Uh, okay, so we've had polka dots, um, we've got a very confused Hagen in chat, pink for angry, um, pot, yeah, I mean, there's fire everywhere, I mean, what could that signify? Uh, we are going to jump to one of the blue characters next and um, I think that just to be really nice to the person that's wearing the really really hot mask uh, I'm going to go to Aldo first of all so that he can suffer for, for even yes. longer <laughs> um, I, I'm Aldo. playing Kylon he is uh, an Erganasi barbarian and wizard. Um, he uh, also uh, runs a bar in Neildra and uh, has been known to be a bit of a gladiator previously. Hmm. He's, yeah. A bit of a fighter. I, 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 so yes, um, again, um, a member of the Shadow Wings and working for the Shadow Wolves, who we will find out a bit more about. Now, of course, it would be cruel to to maintain um, the the ongoing suffering of one of our members and cast. So to alleviate Red, I'm going to go to Red now, so she doesn't need to to worry too much. Um, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll hang on there uh, and find out who's behind that awesome blue mask in just a bit. So I'm playing Adri. She also part of the Shadow Wings has associations with the various pubs, but actually is much more comfortable working in her library, generally shouting at people for being noisy and just getting underfoot because who likes the public if you like libraries? Um, she is mostly a warlock, but she did have a bit of a stint where she went rebellious and kind of ran away from home to be a bit of a rogue. Um, yeah. Oh, mm. and she has a raven, but I wasn't doing cosplay for a raven because <laughs> life's too short. 
Excellent. Um, and and finally, uh, um, I would like to now uh, get to the point that we've all been waiting for for such a long time, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the Shadow Wolves. Um, the Shadow Wolves are. <laughs> I'm only joking. Come on, Mud. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Right. First, I need to take this off because morph suit plus glasses equals a hell of a migraine trying to see through anything. Oh, fuck it. And I appear to be stuck, which is a great start. Jesus! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Put that back on. <laughs> uh, so I am playing Karsat, uh, who is a kobold sorcerer monk. Uh, he, fun enough, also. Uh, has a bar in Neil Dra, uh, and he has something of an obsession with just about anything draconic. And mm. he likes to do his best to annoy Kaiwan if he can. And everyone else in the party, but we'll see, see how much it gets on. So, yes, that, that, is, that is the party introduced. Now, there is another... Um, component of this which I do have to mention on stream and I will mention this every week um, we have got an absolutely amazing map of Greyhawk it is fantastic I, if you like maps in any shape or form uh, please do go and check this out um, we are using it with permission um, as, but we have to obviously give attribution it's by Anna B. Mayer um, and over an inordinate amount of time has been creating this amazing um, map that you see and this is only part of it the the map that's available and you can look at it on uh, greyhawkonline.com gh maps um, please do go check it out if you like maps at all this is just a phenomenal phenomenal piece of design um, and you can obviously support anna as well so that's the attribution there thank you very much to the guys at uh, Greyhawk Online, who got in contact and, and discussed a few things with me. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, so, right. With that in mind, it's time... It's time to actually talk a little bit about what's going on and what's happening in this adventure. The Shadow Wolves. are a group of adventurers who, as a rule, operate clandestine. They keep themselves to themselves. They are a part of a wider military operation uh, on behalf of the King and Queen of Keoland. But they are skilled in stealth and subterfuge and deception and all of these things. The group that we have in front of us may or may not resemble that comment. Uh, we, will, we will find out. Uh, they are well known for being able to slip into enemy territory or uh, get into groups of seditious nature to try and pull them apart or find out what's going on. Um, they are very loyal like, to their king and queen. They are intelligence gatherers. They are uh, used to going undercover. They're used to traveling quickly. Um, uh, but they also have large amounts of time away from home. And because of that, they need to have a suitable pseudonym. They need to have a reason, a rationale as to why they wouldn't spend time in the wonderful city of Neil Dra, the capital. So guys, your cover. What's what? What are you? What do you guys do when you're not? I mean, you're adventurers. Everybody knows that you're adventurers. But what what is the other line of business that you uh, that you get yourself? What what do you do when you're not out partying uh, as well, adventuring as a party? What's your what's your kind of connection to each other? Um, and what what keeps you what keeps you going as a group? Well, Kylan just likes a good fight, really. Um, anything that can challenge him and hit him is a pretty good start. And you're, you're on a network of pubs. We do. Uh, and, and you also, uh, I'm not sure if you're all involved in this, but some of you 
like to watch what other adventurers are up to. Is that is that fair? Is that correct? I don't know what you're talking about. Hmm. Uh, well, look. Well, we, might, we might find out a little bit more about that. Oh, they're not wanting to spill the goods just yet. Um, the members of Shadow Wolves were once thieves or assassins. They were recruited by King Queen and used their skills for greater good. Some of them soldiers, mercenaries, barbarians, gladiators. They were drawn to the group to use their combat skills to perfect them, to become more than what they were. They had an offer of power, of connection, of intrigue, of adventure. And why would those with arcane abilities not wish to? Why would those devout not want to? to take up that opportunity. And despite the backgrounds, the potential for a conflict of interest when you have these clandestine groups operating in cells is reasonable. And on occasion, the Shadow Wolves have uh, hit upon other adventurers that they might not want to, or they might want to avoid them, or they might want to see them, but they have a great deal of agency as into how they go about solving the problems. Uh, they're not above the law. They have a handler. Uh, their handler is called Euphemia Underbow. And she is a halfling and a fortune teller. And is good with information and is actually very good at reading people and has a bit of a flair of performance and really likes a good cup of tea. And so the last thing that you saw in Neil Dra as a group of people was Euphemia sitting around her table with one of an unknown mage. Standing as she was, a relatively tall halfling, uh, instructing the mage to create a teleportation ring to take you to the far southwest corner of the kingdom, to an icy mountain, to cold and grumpy dwarves. How are you all well attired for the cold? Have you prepared? The assumption we were given sufficient notice yes. that we were going somewhere cold. Oh yes, fur-lined everything. Excellent. Uh, Kylan's probably a bit underdressed, but I uh, won't admit it. <laughs> I don't look any different than normal. Okay. Okay, Ildry's okay. Ildry's kind of not quite sort of amazingly dressed, but also just planning on setting things on fire if she needs to warm up. That is fair. And that's why the rest of us haven't dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing that you remember seeing before you step into the circle is the vast and impressive collection of teapots behind Euphemia. She only ever uses one. But nevertheless, as the teapots disappear out of view, you see a very different sight. Your mind travels through the great distances accurately. And I would like someone, please, to roll me a D100. I will take the first one I see in chat. Sixty-four. Okay, let me just sort that in chat. Um, you well, sixty-four has been rolled, so there you go. Um, that certainly puts you within a very decent amount of 
uh, space to where you are meant to be. The first thing that you notice when you come through as the teapots disappear, the snow blasting in your face, the cold around your ankles, and if you are of shorter stature, your knees. It is freezing. The wind whips around. The noise muffled in the snow and your eyes focus and you see two stone buildings in front of you. Two somewhat decrepit and worn out looking buildings. This is not the finery that you are used to of Neildra, not at all. And so it is that you arrive at Stone Shield Outpost in the Crystal Mist Mountains of Greyhawk, a treacherous and unforgiven mountain range known for their harsh, cold climate, perilous peaks. You haven't been told a huge amount but you have been given your mission. You're to come here, make your way off the mountains and down to the south and west and break through the vast wall of dust that has formed in the sea of dust to find out what terrible forces are being amassed and what awful machinations are being put into play against the kingdom for portents, dreams and far-seeing have all divined that a dread force is gen being generated and being targeted toward Keoland. Nothing short of the entire kingdom being overrun by dust has been foreseen. Your job is to find out if the rumours are true, to find out if there is opportunity, weakness, not necessarily expectations of engaging and destroying a whole army, because Neril is a powerful deity. He's well known for destruction, for death, and by all accounts is seeking to extend his influence and power across the material plane. And so his disciples here are making very good on their opportunity to try very hard to overrun your homes. Stone Shield Outpost is a shadow of its former self. You gather that very quickly. You've been told that there are barely 120 dwarves here and a single human. As you look up, you see a vast peak kilometres above you into the clouds above. You yourself know that you're high above the sea of dust which lies to the south. A dwarf stands looking, seeing the telltale signs of the arcane, 
turned round and looked at you. He's now walking towards you. He's a figure with a top knot and heavy mail across his shoulder. At his back, there's a handle battle axe and he strides through the snow. Well then, it would appear we have arrived. Well, this is cool. Tell you to put on something warmer. It's fine, it's fine. Drops it, I'll hold up his hand and briefly bite it in fire. I did that. Hillary does her thing. More warm. Exactly. I'll stick to that music. This could use a few good bonfires. I agree. Why don't you start some? Fuel's walking towards us. Perhaps we should see. I wonder if, if he's in charge. Hi, friend. Kylan waves at him. Carter attempts to jump up onto Kylan's shoulders and wave from the top of him, because I believe you're the tallest. Dwarf. Having failed, Kylan will lift Carter up onto his shoulders. That works. <laughs> He observes you, walks up. Well, welcome to our home. Welcome to Stone Shield Outpost. We were told to expect a group of travelers. And so here you are. All four of you. And the, and he looks, have you got, is there, are your familiars and, and animal companions with you? Jara is not. Um, Erin would be with, um, with Adri, says Raven, kind of tucked in, part, partly hidden by a fur hood. All right. Well, you chose a great day for it. It was much, much colder yesterday. I think you'll enjoy it here. All of you. And he looks at Kylon. Uh, but we might need to be finding you something a bit warmer to wear if you're going up the mountain. Anyway, follow me. Thank you. One word, Kylon. Kylan will put the car shot down. Oh. <laughs> you are taken down to the tunnel and on the flat beyond you see slightly more homely looking towers. The roofs still appear to be on these ones and there's light coming in uh, to your eyes that looks warmer than than the other that you've seen but still this air of decrepit stone falling lacking of care and attention this is not what you are used to when you see the dwarves of Neil Drab perform their mighty architectural engineering marvels for the king and queen this is raw, this is broken, this is old. Come this way. He trudges through the snow. He looks quite comfortable. And he stands at the gate and waits as he ushers you inside one of the warmer parts of the building. Thank 
I'm Ildri, this is Adri, Karsat and Kylon, and Ildri points to each of the party members in turn. I don't think I caught your name. Marjorie. At your service. Nice to make your acquaintance, Ardred. Ardred Groen. I... I've lived amongst these peaks all my life, and... Well... Get yourself in. Get yourself warm. Gardane will be along... Shortly. And he looks around. And you see that there's an elf... Uh, the, 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 the character tall. Do you, you think is that? Uh, it's no. Oh, didn't he mind her? That's Medisa. She's a, a hunter. She's one of us. She was born in a, a human village over by the outskirts of Hell Furnaces. We took her in. She's one of us. And as she gets a bit closer, you realise that it's a human. First non dwarf that you've seen. Hi, welcome. Welcome to a lovely day in the mountains. I'll go and get. I'll go and get you some food and I'll go and get Garden out from whatever particular plan he's got himself stuck into. Uh, please make yourself at home. And he looks. she looks around. At you all, um, uh, and yeah, she says, Ma- "Martin, go, g- fix these, fix our guests a drink now, please." And she walks off into a room in the back. Um, you're in a room with large-looking, comfortable, cloth-worn sofa-type chairs. Comfortable, warm. There's a fire in the back of the room. There's some tables. There's some tapestries hanging from the wall. There's some pictures and paintings. The ceilings aren't particularly high. The door shuts to the outside and the wind that blows around you is now away and you feel the warmth slowly building again. (sighs) That's better. Marjorie makes himself busy. He looks and says, what can I get you? A drink, is it? Something warm. Something warm sounds perfect. I've got just the thing. <laughs> Dragon's breath, you'll love it. Um, Dragon's then, breath? I, I don't think he means actual dragon's breath, Carter. But, but dragon's breath is... It must have something to do with the dragon. Listen to the name. You're handed a glass of brown liquid. It doesn't look like dragon's breath. But if you sip it, it's certainly going to warm you. A figure walks in. Garden, Gardane. Um, he has the look of somebody who's seen a lot of battles. Um, he has the look of somebody who has seen a few years and perhaps wearily holds himself uh, when the door shuts behind him. So, this is what we've got then. This is what we've been sent. This is our guests. Well, welcome. Welcome to Stone Shield Outpost. It's an absolutely fantastic place. And if you hang around long enough, we'll probably manage to find something for you to fix. Don't hang around too long 
but know that you're welcome if you do. This is an amazing place. We've got more room than we could possibly need. Every one of us has 10 bedrooms. Every one of us has 16 basements. Each and every one of us holds 94 swords at once. That is to say, there aren't many of us left. The furnaces run cold, our mines are nearly empty, and the trade that used to run through here barely visits since uh, the changes that have occurred down below. Did you suffer attacks? Oh, and yes. That's why there's so few of you left. Seems quite, quite a lot of damage to the place. We do what we can to keep everything alive and ticking over for those that remain. Many have left. To our south, we have the Hell Furnaces. And if you've heard anything about them, you can well imagine what the problems might be. To Yes. Eldrin takes a sip of the drink that she's been given and kind of considers it a little bit. I'm guessing it's like very alcoholic. Oh yes. Uh, tell me, do you make this? Not myself, but it is made here, yes. We, uh, have Tordred to thank. A some skill mm. as a brewer and distiller, I think. Originally, fr originally from the Hell Furnaces, hence the fiery brew and the fiery names. Uh, she was born and raised here for... the art of brewing. She found herself here before she came to Stone Shield, she was a bit lost. I don't think she was altogether suited to the scorching flames and steamy hot baths that they are accustomed to. Much more happy here. So I, she was uh, taken well to the challenges of living in such an isolated and remote location such as here. Hmm. Well, this is very good. Me. I guess... I'm not entirely sure how long we were planning on staying, but we are planning on venturing down... that way, and she kind of, I guess, indicates vaguely in the direction of the sea. Of dust, maybe. I don't yeah. know if she'd know where that was. But, yeah, you just... You know. Yeah, when you say down... <laughs> Yeah. We know that you've come from the heart of Keel and, and we've been able to witness much and we only know a tenth of it. We're a little bit concerned. Trade stopped ways two years back. Attacks. Yes, he looks at, at Kylan. Attacks. Stay here more than five days, and I guarantee that there'll be some beast at some point at some part of this place that'll want a piece of the stone or the flesh that walks among it. You fancy it's yourself? Awesome. I look forward to challenging myself. Die. Hi. Well, we could certainly help. You could certainly help. He looks at you, considers. Bit of a fighter, are you? Uh, I wouldn't like to brag, but... I like a good scrap. And what about you, Master Dragon? I can do many things. 
Perhaps I'll take a drink of the dragon's breath and then proceed to breathe fire like a dragon using his breath of the dragon. <laughs> Excellent. I see. Um, point it over there um, into the fireplace and get the fire stoked up. Please <sighs> light the fire straight into it. Yeah, and the whole the whole fireplace just roars. Uh, Things like that. And what of you, my lady? And turns to Adri. Um, Less of a fighter. More of a researcher. Ah. But I can hold my own. Okay. Well, hopefully you've got more than a pen. Oh, pens can be very, very pointy. And she'll just kind of like move her, her cloak a little bit and there is the hilt of rapier by her side. Um, the beasts that you say have been attacking, what kind are they? Um, he looks a little cagey, and you pick that up straight away. Oh, beasts of the ice, and beast of the flame. We have all manner, and now we got to start worrying about beasts of the dust as well. They've not yet found their way up. There was an unfortunate sighting. There was a clear day. One of the ones that we have occasionally up here. We could see far. We could see to the wall. We could see across and we could see beyond. It was um, a sight that we thought maybe we wouldn't be seeing. But unfortunately, in the air, a blue, a blue beast. You'll be pleased to know a larger version of yourself, sir. Making its way down to the city below. Mm. It's a fire, but not necessarily the kind of fire you want. Oh, you cut out there, Croy. A blue, a blue beast flying with wings large. There was no mistake in it. A dragon. Oh dear. Where? Where? I know. Oh, oh Where dear. Dragon. Did it say its name? Where? Alan quickly picks up Carsat and holds him. No! <laughs> we are not going to look for it. Elska Why? Elskara has uh, certain uses for us. Perhaps why you've been sent here. No. Oh. Anyway, one of our scouts, let's call them. He looks a bit cagey, kind of just like, yeah, so thinks about it. He saw the dragon rise up over the over the cliff, skirt round Elskara. Thought nothing more of it until the next day. He claims to have seen witness that the blue dragon was assailing itself upon another beast high in the icy mountains. Doesn't bear well for any of us if that is the case. The last thing we want is a dragon war right here on our doorstep. 
The temperatures, they dipped two years ago. The place became very cold. We don't have the numbers to hunt dragons. And we certainly do not have the numbers to get a fully ensconced dragon out of its cave. And so it is. Uh, somewhere nearby, their territories seem to have crossed. Now we're used to some of the fiery beasts coming up here on occasion. But never before have we seen a blue. It is not good, and it is not welcome. It may be the end of us here. So be it, we will not go without a fight. Strong with blue. Blue is lovely. Is that not everyone feels the same about the dragons as you do? Blue dragons are lovely. Have you actually spoken to one? Not yet. So how do you know? Blue dragons found in my clan. Blue dragons are lovely. Just need to speak to them. Just being part of your clan does not automatically make someone lovely. I will direct you to my grandfather's side of the family as evidence of that one. Or like my entire family. Mm, family and clan different. So that is one singular dragon car sat. That doesn't mean they all are like that. Doesn't mean they're not. Um, what? Ildry's going to turn away from this conversation and turn to, I forget his name, um, but she's basically going to ask, what colour was the other dragon? As white as the snow outside on the ground. We figured that maybe there was some truth of it. Temperature's don't stay this low all the time up here. Two years ago, something changed. The side of a mountain cracked and fell away, and ever since then, the place has been even colder than I would dare imagine. Ah, we can hard, hardy up. We're not scared of it. We've never seen the beast until now, until another dragon moved in. Ah, oh, yes, it's Gadara's foot. It is, uh... Elskara's unfortunate foot at the bottom. You'll have to pass through it if you intend to walk down through the trail to the mountain. You'd be lucky. Maybe a young one. You might be unlucky. And it might fancy one of those roosts that the white has made for itself. It's possible. But here we are. Aye. Now, we've got your rooms upstairs. They're heated and warm. You've got food. I'd like to say that you could leave at daylight, but frankly, you'll be hard pressed to notice a difference with the amount of snow that's outside just now. But nevertheless, you're welcome to make yourself at home here. We occupy the majority of what you can see outside. There are some who prefer the solitude of the distant peaks, but on the most part, anybody that's got business up Elskara uh, have business there, let us say. And anybody who is uh, underground just now is doing their part in what they can to keep this place afloat. We still have access to our minds of old, even if the forges generally are not what they used to be. 
Yes. Welcome. Welcome indeed. Thank you. Is there anyone here in need of healing? He, he looks at you. Oh. Well, what have you, Abel? I can wield a little healing magic. It is good to know. It might yet come uh, in use. Uh -huh. uh, no, we, we have cleric of our own. Uh, keeps us well, but thank you for the offer. It is much appreciated. Perhaps you would like to talk to Ildi Dankel. Perhaps I would. She's a cleric of Jaskar. Makes sense, right? Protector of the mountain. Yes. Well. It does indeed. Where's your kitchen? Um, he... He looks at you. Um... He, he can tell he's a little bit... He's a little bit unsure about Carsat, but he, you know he's been told. He tolerates you. <laughs> keep keep out the way of Jas. <laughs> keep out the way of Ildi Dankel, my little friend. I suspect that she might take exception to you. Jaskar teaches his followers to stand against. All manner of orcs and goblinoids might not take too kindly. Well, just be careful. Don't mar the beauty of the hills and the mountains here. You'll probably be okay. Probably. Oh my goodness, we're in for this. He can hear him mutter under his breath as he as he walks out. Please, upstairs for your rooms. Um, uh, food is through outside and into the hall above. Uh, follow the stairs up through the arches uh, and you'll find uh, there's plenty um, we all eat communally at the same time which will be uh, soon you'll hear the dinner gong hopefully listen out for it when you hear that head up and through the arches and join the feast you'll be our welcome guests uh, now if you'll excuse me uh, I have business and the uh, dwarf heads out. <laughs> this cold breeze, now that you've warmed up at the fire, whips round you, and you wish that the door would be shut quickly. But slowly it is, and the wind continues to whip at your ankles for longer than is always required. It's a terrible effect. People definitely need to learn to close doors on a mountaintop. <sighs> you look around, you take the food that came along, some breads, cheese. You have another drink. You're on your own in this building. Oh well, we're helping then. You just stay out of sight. What we said. We don't want trouble here. That was We're not here time. for. Yes. Maybe don't mention your fondness for those blue dragons either. I don't know that that will endear us to our friend, new friends. Oh, we're good. Of course, it looks very, very sad. This as sad as a reptile can look on his face anyway. We know, but they might have bad experiences with another. So maybe keep it to yourself. Okay. Just until we know them better. But that may take some time. Quite possibly. 
this alcohol is really good. Do you reckon I could maybe import some of it? You're talking and you're discussing and you're reminiscing upon some of your old stories. Would, would, would anybody care to offer up an example of, of what has brought you as a group together? Has anybody got an example of, of when your, your group was being the best at what it does? I suppose this isn't the first time we've fought dragons. That wasn't a dragon. That was something else. I mean, it started as a dragon. dragon. It was just a little bit smoky and undead. Shadow, fire, and death. Not a dragon. Take dragon. As you're reminiscing over the battle against a terrible, undead, smoky, pretend dragon, you hear the clanging of metal. Dang, 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 dang. I suppose that would be the dinner gong. It's subtle. Almost didn't hear it. <laughs> it sounds like an excellent idea. Let's go. You open the door, snow whips in, you look out across and across to the arches that were indicated and through and you see you see dwarves running up the stairs. Running, running, or just... Yes, running. Running like they're really hungry, or running like maybe that wasn't dinner. Roll perception. It's a good first roll. Yeah, I'll take that. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, that'd be a 31. That's the very one, right there. Uh, you quickly realize that these people are grabbing arms as they run up the stairs. You realize that they are armored um, and you can also hear through the snow and the, the, the shouts in Dwarvish, which whilst you may not speak, you are under no illusion as to the intent behind it. These are commands to get people to uh, to arms, to formation, to um, attention, and, and uh, the bells keep ringing as well uh, as you're standing out louder that they are outside. Not dinner, fighting. That's not... I think we're up. Well then. Good to do before Let's go and press. <laughs> Kylan takes off at a full sprint. Yeah, uh, you catch up with one of the dwarves. I uh, run up the stairs. Hey, hi, Ed. It looks like we've got some things coming in off the ice. Uh, bears, apparently. Nothing to worry about, most likely, but um, they have been... Uh, kind of, they're jogging, he's jogging next to you. They have been breeding with the bears in the south. Uh, it's a bit of a nasty combination. Uh, like, uh, you... Head up that way, maybe you'll find them. Garden's gone up that way, you'll be able to meet up with Garden up there. And he points you up another steep set of stairs that go up to another building. Uh, it's the ruined quarters, we're going to check down here. Uh, sheesh. And he kind of legs it off, and he legs off that way and he points you up and you see some dwarves dis disappearing around the corner at the top of the stairs. You sprinting off? Set off after them. Yep. yep. Okay, uh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a climb. It's a bit of a climb, and you notice as you're 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 getting up here that some of the buildings stop being quite as well kept. They're 
nature of them looking much more worn, tumbled down. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, detritus sitting on the, the path you have to jump over. Um, but yeah, you, after a couple of minutes of, of following this figure who's got quite a speed, uh, knowing where they're going, um, yeah, you arrive at the bottom of some stairs looking up. And as you look up, you see a very large white bear at the top of the stairs looking down on you. And then you realize that it's not the only one. And as you look and survey the scene, there are at least six, if not more, of these huge polar bears. Some of them lolling around, some of them ferreting in old parts of the buildings, raking about. You catch up with Guardian, and next to him is an slightly older looking dwarf. He has a metal faceplate right across him in a kind of bronze colour. Um, and he's hunkered down. Um, and he, you know, he ushers you to, to sit down next to him. Um, and and Gardane says, Hey, well, it seems like we've got some of the... Uh, the, the the bear's off the ice. Um, I'm a little bit concerned. Look at the look at their eyes. Well, One. Suppose let's see if these are a challenge. Kyle and I'll uh, draw out his warhammer and his battle axe from his back. And we see from where we are what's up with the eyes. They are glowing in a way that makes your hair look about the, about the same kind of colour, I would say. Um, they are definitely not looking like a friendly, huggable, cuddly bear. Um, they are looking very much like something that is hungry. Hmm. Cassette, don't wander off too far. I don't want you to get caught in the crossfire. Got it. All right. So, what's your plan? I'm head first with the big bears. Car shall stand between the bears and the bear attic. Okay. Um, I think this would be an appropriate opportunity for everybody to please. Real initiative. I can't currently select my token. That would be very, yeah. very helpful. And where yes. I spending less time making maps and more time <laughs> ensuring that everything is working, then... We'll take the pretty maps. <laughs> Ildry... Yeah. And I can control Adri's token apparently, but not Eldry's. Yep, yep. Let me get Kylon sorted. There you go. And let me. Um. Quickly do. Mm hmm. Let me do. Let me do. Okay, so you're looking at these. You're looking at these bears, and 
you see that they are basically just grumping at each other. And um, they are quite happily ignoring you at this point in time. Um, there we go. Right, that should be everybody. Erin is okay as well, and Jara is okay. It's funny that those two seem to be fine on every map. Right, I'll get that sorted. Um, okay. Right. There we go. It's working. Okay, let's get some battle music going for those of you at home. Um, yes. Here we go. I'll do just now is build up tension. Right, you are um, approaching these. I am going to roll. Oh, okay. Your rolls are all hit in private. But they are going in. Okay. I think it's anything that we click on from the sheet. Yeah. Maybe. We might not be able to fix that quickly. All right. Anyway, right. Shout, call out your rolls. I can see them, but call out your rolls when you roll. Uh, shout out the number that you get, and that'll keep us right. We'll be fine with that. Um, but I'm seeing them, and you're seeing them, so that's okay. Um, and chat can get them as well. Right. So yeah, if you shout out your rolls as you make them, um, then we'll keep us all right. Uh, so in this in this order we have the opportunity for Kylon to go first. Stand at the bottom of the stairs looking up Kylon, what's your first move? Um he is first of all going to enter Blade Song. Um, then he is going to move his full 55 foot of movement uh, up to there, and he is going to wait okay. and hold his action to attack whatever company him and just kind of shout, come and get it. <laughs> All right, so you bellow over the walls uh, at these things. Okay. Action yeah. help. Adri? So, uh, Adri obviously can't move quite as far as Kylon, um, but she can get. So, 30 foot gets her to. You'd have thought by now I'd have learned how to use Roll 20. Um, 30 foot will get her up to about there. She's keeping close by the um, by the pillars. Yeah. Um, she's going to bonus action hide to make as much use of everything as she can and hold her action um, what's she going to hold? She's going to hold her action with her longbow um, yeah. drawn. Okay. Um, so 
So you are hearing the bellowing of the air genasi. And in response to that, you hear the bellowing of a bear, which no longer is looking down at whatever it was chewing on the ground, is now looking into the direction of the noise that it heard. As it roars up in return and bellows and begins to lollop across towards what it is that it heard. And as it enters into the ability for my internet to deliver me the sheet of this bear, um, as it runs towards the wall and begins to jump up over it towards the noise, Kylon going to leave and take a quick break but with the image of you looking at the wall and seeing this giant bear jumping up and over it and trying to jump onto you Kylon just smiles <laughs> We left it where our happily delighted fighter type character, a, 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 a seasoned, seasoned fighter of the arena um, and adventurer looks up at this giant beast that's jumped up onto the wall um, and has begun to, to jump. I'm going to make an athletics roll for it just to see if it actually can clear the space that it needs to because uh, you know we, we like to we like to keep things uh, we like to keep things in a in an even keel it has rolled a 15 I think that's quite enough for it to get that little space um, so this beast um, Kylon this beast jumps up on the wall and then springs off it towards you and lands right in you and roars in your face lovely Okay. Um, next up. Adri, you have moved and you're holding an action. Are you going to take that held action? Um, yeah, I think this... I know that Kylon can look after himself, but these things are big. Um, so... She's going to lose an arrow at the bear. Um, I'm hiding with advantage. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, oh, God, where's my long bow gone? Well, advantage doesn't really count, um, help because they were, it's a pair of 20s. <laughs> Not well, natural, dirty. That, yeah, that hits. Excellent. Alrighty, so I'm going to add Genie's Wrath onto that for an extra five. And then sneak attack. She says not being able to find it on the list. The bear jumps over Adri's reactions super fast. The arrow looses across as it, the bear lands in front of Kylon, who's also holding an attack. Am I correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's the sneak attack damage. Okay, wow. We'll take... Swing with the Warhammer. Yeah, so between the two of you, um, between the two of you, you manage to even this huge bear, the arrow. Where does the arrow hit that it's such a, a mortal wound? And where does the hammer connect to in addition to that? And I just realised that my... There's a, there's a 15 hit, yeah? Yes. 
challenge then. Excellent. Thanks. So as the, as the bear is leaping, Adri is going to be aiming for neck, throat area. Um, yeah. So much soft and squishy. And um, Kylon. Where does your what does your hammer connect with when it when it lands to knock it dead? Just slam him down on top of his head. No, on top of his head, yeah. So it jumps down, its head down, you just bang with the arrow and it falls. The momentum momentum of it barges into you and, and you, you move back just a bit as it, uh, as it you know, just in order not to be covered by this thing. And the body that's there, um, it's it's big. This thing is 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 lot is definitely is definitely large. Um, so yes, but you are aware of now. Um, having heard that, you see uh, more faces appear um, above you. Um, looking down, you hear roars, and behind you, um, you see uh, uh, another um, another one of these bears looking out over the parapet. And it uh, it roars it roars at you, um, Ildri. Um, Ildri is going to move up thirty feet up to probably like up to here. Um. And then she is going to cast probably, hang on, sorry. I've lost track of which tab I have open and Roll20 is doing things. Um, Sorry, I haven't played a spellcaster before in Roll20 and I am trying to figure stuff out. She is going to cast... <sighs> Hex on... Hang on. Sorry, um... God, my brain. It's 90 feet, right. Basically, that one died right as I, like, was kind of, had finished coming up with a plan and now I'm a little bit scrambling. Um, (coughs) Oh good, yeah, okay, I'm gonna cast Hex at the one that is up there on the top of the thingamabobby. Yeah. That seems like a good place to start. Um, And then... Probably... As my action, I would like to summon... These better dice rolls keeps appearing. No, no mind. I think that's probably all I can do at this point. Okay. I'm sorry. Sorry. Right. Yeah. So it's got a hex on it. Um, we know that. Um, okay. And you summon. What describe describe how? Um, just this like dark cloud descends over and sort of sinks into the polar bear for a second and then fades away. Darkness appears. No connection to you, but nevertheless, in the, the blast, the relative snow, um, the snow just takes on this darkened pal as it looks um, like a storm brewing in the middle of it, yes. And then you brought in... Um, you brought in uh, uh, another part of that as well, where you are um, summoning... Did, you, did I hear you say that? You were going to bring something else into the battle? I was going to summon Jara, but I can't actually hit anything that's like... There's no point wasting that wild shape to okay. summon them, so it's fine. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Um, Karsa, these aren't dragons. Uh. And Karsat will use. The, that's what I want to do. Uh, his 45 feet of movement to place himself here. Oh, right there. So I'm placing myself there because I can't do it yet. 
Um, we'll cast Mind Sliver at uh, this bear here. Mm hmm. Or, sorry, not Mind Sliver, uh, Mind Whip. Lots of Mind Spell. Uh, so, a DC 17 Intelligence save. Okay. They get echoed to me, you don't see, but an intelligence on this big beast, no surprise, not particularly high. Uh, it rolled a four. Okay, so it takes 14 points of psychic damage, and all that lovely things happen to it. So it can no longer take a reaction, and on its turn, it can either take a move, a reaction, or a bonus action, and nothing else. Oh. Right, oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, mm. It's slow light. Just quickly, that dude at the top has disadvantage on deck saves. That's part of Hex. I okay. Just that. Got that. Right, so this one has Tasha's Mind Whip applied. Um, these things don't really seem to particularly care too much. Um, and um, the one that you... The one that you just hit, Karsa, makes a move towards you. Is, is there anything else in your turn? Uh, do, do, Sorry, do wrong back. A moment. Uh, we'll see what they do when they get closer. Okay. Give me a few more. Okay, and closer is what these do. Uh, they are going to firstly run to the top of the stairs and then they're going to attempt to jump down the stairs. But of course, um, it can only move. So it gets to the top of the stairs and it begins to jump. I'm going to give it, uh, I'm going to give it a dex save. If it rolls less than 10, it's falling down the stairs. It got 16, so that's okay. It, it tries to jump and it writes itself. It can't. It can't do that. Um, for some reason, its body looks restrained and it looks a little bit surprised and it stands at the top of the stairs just staring blankly down. Um, the dead polar bear doesn't look like it's going to rejuvenate. It's not like it's the last time um, you've seen something that looks dead and then comes alive again. Um, however... The one at the top uh, of the the parapet above you um, clambers up on the wall and then kind of you see it stretch itself down. It, its back legs hold on to the, to the top of the wall and it just kind of elongates itself down. Not beyond its natural size, but you just realise how big these things are when it stretches, you know, 15, 20 foot with its front paws and as its front paws connect with the wall below it parkours itself down and then it um, jumps down uh, onto the space behind uh, Kylon and it takes uh, uh, its opportunity to swipe at Kylon and It does so in grand fashion. Uh, firstly, it tries to hit you. Oh, I'm whispering these. Hang on. Um, it tries to claw at you um, with its awesome, uh, with its awesome big, massive fighty looking sharp claws it rolled a 15 15 hit you're muted it doesn't hit and we don't we didn't expect you dodge out of the way i guess uh, a nine definitely doesn't um frustrated that it's unable to do that it reaches forward with its mouth and it tries to you quickly and deftly what why are you so difficult to hit why is this bear not getting a piece of you You mean? Alan's just fast. He's fast. Okay. Yeah. So the bear's just like, you, you, he's, the bear's telegraphing its attacks to you, right? And you're just like, shoom, 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 no problem. All right. 
Okay, that's the bear's turn for now. The noise, however, has alerted um, some others, so they will join the fray this round. Uh, Kylon, you're up. Um, well then, uh, we shall... First of all, shocking grasp the bear next to me. For seven damage. And then I suppose we'll take one swing with the battle axe and as part of two weapon fighting, we'll take a swing with the warhammer as well. Wonderful. So having dodged out of the way of so many of these attacks, you bring this big battle axe round and slam into its side one-handed, then with the other hand, carrying on your momentum, you smack the hammer into the side of it and do it a significant amount of damage. Uh, 24 points of damage. Wow, okay. Yeah, you can see it's taken its bruise, it shakes its head <laughs> as, you, as you do this. Um, I'm also going to bring in our friends the dwarves as well okay any any more from Kylon uh, we shall move a little bit further up not too far enough that he'll kind of still chase me but takes me to the bottom of the stairs and he takes he won't get an opportunity attack because I shock and grasp him. We shock and grasp him. Takes away his. Alright, I missed. Takes away his reaction. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So he doesn't. He he looks around you, watches you go. Right. So you moved up, um, and you can see there's another one upstairs coming down towards you. Yeah. Uh, Guardbane charges forward, um, and he's going to move towards that, which he's going to have to, so yeah, there we go. And he charges up towards that. Um, this bear is going to make its sweet way down and then he's just going to jump off do that kind of same stretchy manoeuvre that it does to swing down on its back legs, just lolloping um, down uh, and then use the rest of its, yeah, that's fine. Um, you see another one of these bears appearing behind the other one uh, at the top of the stairs. Adri. Mm. Can we see, um, from where Adri is, can she see all of the bears at the moment? Including mm. what looks, on the map at least, looks like a much larger one. No, at the moment, um, the, the, the elevation, they're much higher up at the back of the, the place. That, um, I don't know that you would... Uh, let me, give me, give, just give me one second and then... Um, I will, yeah, so basically, um, no, okay, yeah, 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 you can see that, yeah, it's, you just see this big hulk in white and black, b this mass appearing um, up against one of the lower walls, um, so yeah, you can, you can definitely see uh, those ones, yes, you can see, so I, I apologise, you can see them all from where you are, you have line of sight. Okay. Um, she's going to stay where she is, but is going to lob three Eldritch Blast um, bolts at the large one. Okay. Um, so, one. Um, I think that was 
those three. Yes. Oh, crap, sorry. I saw an advantage on. It's all right, we'll see one on the left. Um, yeah, so that definitely hits. And... Um, you uh, Alrighty, so. roll damage on the first one. On, the th on all three hit, yeah. Yeah, so first one is going to have Genie's Wrath applied to it as well. And then the others. Okay. What form do your Eldritch Blasts take in this instance? They've got a... They've got a slightly odd light to them. They, you know that kind of slightly yellow that you get in the sky just as there's a thunderstorm coming? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That kind of, of colouring to the air and... The air around them if I said it just looks oppressive, it looks like there is the mother of all thunderstorms coming. Um, and when they hit, there's a slight impression of lightning, but it's it's not, you know it's not the lightning. It's, it's that after rumble. Okay. So it crackles and, and, and bursts in. Yeah. Um, it's very effective, it's streaking across and up. You just catch the top of its back, you don't see all of its body, but it's so big. Um, you can see the back of its neck, its massive shoulders, this thing must weigh uh, hundreds of kilos. Um, it's fast, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so you do, uh, how many, you've got that, 7, 15, 20 points of damage. Um, and it uh, just, it connects, you know that. Yeah, it connects. How's it looking from the bit of it I can see? It looks a little bit singed, ever so slightly. Um, the black hair um, has that sort of crispy look to it that, uh, that, that occurs. Um, but yeah, not... Not... Um, not terribly put off by by that, as far as you can tell. There oh. we go. Right, excellent. So we got to twenty, didn't we? Yes, twenty points of damage. Okay. Um, the polar bear that uh, was a bit slow in the uptake, apparently. Not sure why. Uh, lollops over uh, thirty. Um, okay, gets down to guardian. That's fair. But can't attack. Is Aaron doing anything? Aaron is going to be using her movement. She's got 50 feet. Um, she is going to be bringing herself up around about there. Okay. And that's her. Okay. Uh, polar bear again. I think this one's just going to roll up down onto the wall there. Uh, I'll give it. Yeah, that's fine. Let's get it in there. So it, you see another one charging down the stairs. Its momentum just continues to bound, bound, two bounds, and it's over. Um, and it jumps over. Let's see if it. Oh, that's the wrong button. Let's see if it's going to get a deck save. Fifteen is going to have to make. Um, it fails. Um, so the one that jumps over, it tries to deftly land on this thin, narrow, completely misjudging it. Um, and I'll roll a d6. Uh, one, two, three, it goes to the left. There we go. Bang. And it falls down. It's prone in front of you, Kylon. Um, Wonderful. But you've got three of these. Uh, approaching. 
Okay, have we got Aaron twice? No, something's... Okay. What happened there? Right. That polar bear's taking its turn. Uh, the dwarf with the um, armor over its over his face charges forward and can connect. Excellent. Um, so he jumps forward and he is brandishing a warhammer, two-handed. Um, and strikes at this bear. One, two, three, and hits it. Hits it with the hammer as it smacks it about the chops. Um, it manages to make just one connect. I'll double check that. It manages to make two connect. So, does 12 points of damage as it's as he engages, shouting, Rrr! you don't understand. Ildri. Ildri raises her arms and just says, Jara, I need you. And she is going to cast Summon Fire, Summon Wildfire Spirit, which basically brings forth the form of a hawk. Um, kind of like a it's within 10 feet of the top of the polar bears, but it's like sort of fluttering above them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and sort of on the further side away from them. So it doesn't accidentally hit the dwarves, which means that both of the polar bears need to make a dex saving throw. The one that's been hexed needs to make it with disadvantage. And the DC, I believe, is 17 or 18 for that. Dex. Um, the first one 18. rolls 11. Uh, the second one rolls 11 at disadvantage. So they both roll. They yeah. both roll 11. So anybody in chat? <laughs> 11 and 11. There you go. Um, so, so, yeah, they, they take, both fail. Take, they both take... Oh, shit, that was a good damage roll. Um, they both take 2d6 of fire damage. Max damage. As Jara appears in a flaming ball out of the um, thing. Nice. And then Ildri is going to bonus action Misty Step to probably like. No, she's going to move over here and then she's going to bonus action. Misty step up. To probably like there. Okay. Karsat. So, first thing Karsat is going to do look at Kylon surrounded by the various bears. And um, he will cast. Fireball, but it'll use a uh, meta magic transmute spell so it does lightning damage instead of fire damage. Which shoot. It does not want to cast. No, that's annoying. That is nice. Six. Okay. No, that's 1d6. Okay. Easy, so I'll do it that way. Uh, so, 22 lightning damage in a 20 foot area around uh, Kylon and the bears. Okay. So we have. Um... Let's see, I've got 17 decks. Radius 20. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, target a little bit so I don't hit. Three. Hit anyone else. Pylon's fine, but I don't want to hit Eldry. It's a bit further up the stairs. Oh, a bit further up the stairs, okay. 
Um, hang on, I go to the map. Yeah, okay, so you can hit... If you don't want to hit Ildry, then you can hit the three of them. Um, the two up the stairs and the one just to the right. Brilliant. Okay. Um, and they need to roll decks. One of them is... Uh, this is one of them's definitely got something... Uh, the one closest to Kylan's prone, so the disadvantage. Yep. Yeah. And I think it's like the amount of blood's currently chewing a dwarf. Hmm. Hey, Kylan shall make his save at advantage. Uh, so, a three for the one that's prone. A uh, twenty, not twenty. For the one that's at the top of the stairs, but is hit by um, whatever it was that got chucked at him before. I forgot already. Ta- yeah, mine uh, mine twenty. Shouldn't affect the save at all. Yeah. Okay. And then um, the other one gets a sixteen, so fails. So two fails, one success. So twenty-two to one, eleven to the other, and five to you, mate. Uh, yeah. Uh, is Jara like flying up in the air or is he grinding the stairs? He's flying above them. So movement will be from to behind the bears? No. Jara. And I will then use two sorcery points. To quicken spell, sword burst on them. Okay. So another uh, deck save, uh, save or fifteen four seven. Uh, first rolls nineteen, and Damn. second rolls nineteen. Both roll nineteen. Right, zero damage then. Okay. That's a shame. Right, tis bear's turn. Uh, bear. Number one, under the influence, is still able to get down. The mind whip, however, um, is a bit of an issue. It must choose to move. um, And as it approaches, it tries to swipe at Kyle and then just doesn't understand why it's not working. Um, Looks like a very confused bear. Um... The next bear, which is next to the dwarf, continues to batter into. Um, so it makes two bite attacks. Uh, my, one bite attack, I'll take the first one, 17, and then two claw attacks, 13 and a 17. Um, Gardane's AC is just way, way higher than that. So um, he's wearing dwarven plate, so he, he ain't got a chance against might by this thing so that's that um okay and the big bear uh moves this thing is fast so it moves 20 to there um and it just lollops down it's just it's 30 foot but it's jumping it no problem. It's used to moving about on the ice shelves and fifteen twenty. It's gonna put itself right amidst the other ones. It kinda of jumps over the wall uh, and as it does so it towers above you all. Um it's probably a good eighteen foot to its shoulders. Um, and when it stands up on the wall that probably puts it about 30 foot above you Um, it's about 15 foot wide it's just a vast vast bear and it roars at you Um, that one that's gone that one's gone right top of the round Kylon okay Um, well 
That changes things a bit. Well, we're going to cast your favourite spell, Croy. <sighs> why? 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 So, uh, the five kind of, the two fighting the dwarves and the three are in Kylon. Um, that spell save should be 17. <laughs> um, yes. Okay, so um, it's making a wisdom save. Wisdom save, cause that works right. The big one failed. How many are you hitting? Uh, five. The big one rolled a five. The one next to you um, rolled a ten. Uh, that's the wrong one. Um, I rolled initiative. Uh, wisdom 19. So the one there, for some reason, the one sort of in front of you, just to your left, but to the left of the big bear, um, it actually succeeded. Rude. Um, And you're getting five. Yeah. You get, you're getting the one that's at the top of the stairs. Uh, no, the two down by the dwarves. Two down, right, got you. Yeah, at least. Um, that got a 19 as well. Yeah, oh, it's looking. Hit one. It's been up. Um, and the last one, uh, Dead by Dwarfs, got a four. So, yeah. Um, we have a situation where quite a few of these are slowed. I'm going to put a net on them just to hopefully remind us that the net is slow. And that re dramatically reduces the, uh, the level of abuse that you're likely to haul in. Right. Um, Wonderful. Guardian, um, are you not done yet? Go on. No, okay. that was uh, that was all I wanted to do. Okay, okay, okay. Guardian, the person that was introduced to you, he's shouting at it, come on! And he's just giving it that. And his ability to smack these things in the face with a warhammer now. He moves to, to two-handed um, and he makes three attacks. It's a 10, a 17 and a 10. So he hits once and why, I don't know, but that does seven damage. Okay. Oh, he's definitely making inroads on this. Um, the polar bear at the top, which is not affected by slow and it is otherwise uh, roars down the stairs um, and then runs through its colleagues um, and it can just fit through and get to ah okay it's landed in front of Carsat um and so it's going to attack Karsa as it charges forward. And in doing so, you're going to get clawed twice. So 20 to hit, 26 to hit. Okay, yeah. Yeah. and then he's going to bite you. 12. Uh, so one claw hit. Uh, we shield up. Okay. So on the... Nope. That was... Why did it roll that? I hit that one. Claw, hang on. Yeah, that's right. Okay. The top one that I rolled um, attached itself to bite, but that's... The one that it did hit, the one it did connect, gives you 24 slashing damage. Um, and yeah, and you rolled, so you get plus five with shield, don't you? So yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I've got 25 AC. Yeah, 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 okay, that's cool, that's cool, right. Um, okay, Adri.
Gonna stick with Eldritch Blast. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I don't get sneak attack on spells, unless Crow wants to bend the rules a little bit. <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, it's a ranged attack, so could argue it. Um, but I think that's kind of taking the piss a little. So um, she is going to go for yeah. So three bolts, one aimed at each of the guy. Um, the um, well, bears. There we go. Words are hard. Um. Yeah, one aimed at each of the bears immediately in front of her, and then the one who has just come in and taken a swipe at Harsat. Um, damage blast, so one, yep. two, three. Yep, they all hit. Excellent. Okay, so first one again will have Genie's Wrath on it. So that's 10 points of damage. And then the other two. First one, oh, 10 points of force damage. And third one, eight points of force. So that was 10, 10, and eight. So 10, now you want, want a bolt hit each of the three smaller ones, is that right? Yes, yeah, so the first one hit the The one in front, and yeah. then one to the left, and then yeah. the one behind then... it. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Yeah. The air crackles with the the yellow for a second as the streaks pound to this, but there's melee everywhere, and it is a big, big pile of fur. Um... Yeah, so you hit this one, um, but this one can't get past the the dwarves, and it's going to take a swipe at the armor, the guy with the armor on his face, the gold armor on his face. The one next to it looks uh, very beaten up, so it's going to attack the dwarf. Uh, Twenty one would hit, uh, fifteen, and then the bite. Attack, attack, bite, same go, roll that. Eight, that's a complete miss. So our friend, who you have not been introduced to yet, takes some, oops, I'll do, takes some slashing damage, 20 points of slashing damage. Okay, doesn't even shake it. Um, Erin. So Erden is um, flapping and and the flying. Sorry, I was mute. There you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> I did the second mute. Um, yeah. So Erin is going to go up. Um, she's sort of like taking instruction from Madri. She's um, yeah, going to go up over the top of the um, battle, but she's sort of like 20, 30 feet up. Mm -hmm. um, I say I'm not attempting Pythagoras right now because um, it's nearly half past 11 and I've had wine. Um, but yeah, so 50 feet of movement on a diagonal. Yep. 
Yep, we'll call it 40 or thereabouts. It's fine. Up high. So up high and certainly out of the reach of most of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the dwarf that was attacked is returning the favour. Um, I'll just double check. There we go. Good. That should be fine. Um, it's going to make three attacks with the Warhammer. One, two, three. Oh man, I'm rolling bad. One of them hits and does not... Seriously, could I roll any lower? So we get these um, dwarves facing off against it uh, and these fights are not going particularly well for the dwarves but you are there to back them up. And Ildri... Ildri is going to cast Flame Strike centred basically behind the big one and sort of trying to hit those big, those two that are on the um. Yeah, on the stairs, the bottom of the stairs. Yeah, so it's basically aiming to hit the big one and the little one behind it. Um, so we- Okay, flame strike. Dex saves. Okay, big one on a dex rolled a three. The one above it rolled 13, and the other one rolled an eight, so none of them succeed. And they take 26 points of fire slash radiant damage. Nice. Yeah, they get themselves properly singed. And they don't like the heat much at all. Yeah. And then bonus action Misty Step 30 feet out of the way, which is probably like here, I guess. Yep. What you do on top of the wall, stand up on the pillar. Hey, right, cool. All right then, Carsat. So, now that Ildri's clear, Carsat would like to cast uh, Lightning Ball again. So a transmuted fireball. Well, that's nice. And if I do it about here, I should be able to hit all the bears without hitting anyone else. Apart from Kylan and Carson. <laughs> oh, yeah, so we're like lightning. So we should be alright. <laughs> um, okay, so all of them, including yourself, and you need a dex save of 17, knowing fine well that none of these bears are dexterous. You would think that none of them will make the save. Let's just quickly roll through all those rolls and we'll see how that goes. I'll read them off from top to bottom, moving left to right. Um, that uh, one's still g- hex, stupid one. Oh, yeah. Okay, so disadvantage. Um, it takes half damage, right? If it fails. Uh, it succeeds. No. <laughs> Sorry, if it succeeds, it's getting less. Yeah, it takes half damage. It takes half damage. So whatever happens, that one's toast. So I'm not even going to bother. Uh, okay, so top to bottom, uh, we get a fifteen, which fails. Um, we get a six, which fails. Uh, we get the big one with a ten, and that fails. To the left of that, we get a seven, which fails. Um, to the slightly below and left, in front of Gardain, is a uh, fail. Irrespective, it's dead because it's only got one hit point left. And then the final one is going to also fail. They all failed. So, how much yeah, damage? Yeah, Kylan all thirty-five oh, like is. And Kylan will take his 8 lightning damage. <laughs> uh, and I take nothing because I succeeded and I have evasion. <laughs> okay. 
So you're in the middle of the storm and you kill outright one. You very grievously damage another. Why did that not happen? You very grievously damage that um, and you piss off royally the big one and you kill the one in front of Gardain and you also kill the one that's in front of Ildri and in front of uh, this new dwarf that you don't know um, and that's dead too so the bears are thinning in numbers but they're they look enraged and unhappy about the fact that that just happened to them um, okay any more from Karsat? Uh, yeah Karsat will move to no oh, sorry that's measure not move move to here so he's between them and he will use a key point to take patient defense mm -hmm. so all the things are angry at him they have disadvantage to hit mm -hmm. okay 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 so Karsat uh, polar bear that's still alive um, just reaches forward a bit and makes swipes at Kylon um, that okay. is one bite and two claws 22 to hit and uh, no okay so if you haven't realised Kylon's AC is quite high 22 does Probably not ridiculously hit ridiculously high <laughs> so um, the next one is Deed and the big one is taking a view upon this very small thing that looks like dinner in front of it and is going to do what it can um, and what it can do is the big one still slowed by chat? it is thank god Um, yes, the big one is. Uh, so he is going to lumberly, so reach out. He rolls a one, um, so that ain't going to help. And therefore is the end, because it's slowed and that's all he can do. Um, right. I think we've got through the, we've got through everybody. So Kylon, you're back up. Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Got everybody in. Okay, Kylon, finish them. Um, we'll move slightly. Is it possible to get within five foot of all three of them, or mm, is that not possible? No, not possible. Okay, so we'll go for the two nearest to Carsat then. Um, unless you want um, to unless you want to try and jump on one of their heads and then you can stand on the big one and then the two of them would be next to that is very tempting and yes I would very much like to do that go on then give me an athletics roll uh, DC uh, is high um, so yeah roll a big number okay Ah, not enough. Not high enough. Right. Uh, um, so you try and you try and jump on this thing. Uh, you body slam it, and you fall pretty much back to where you are. Um, but you do remark upon how soft and cuddly it is, despite looking like a very vicious <laughs> killing machine. But yeah, oh, well, go on. Hey, what uh, in, in that case, we shall sword burst. So deck saves from the two new car then. Okay, the little bear gets 14 and fails, the big bear gets 14 and fails. And that's both 14 force damage each then. Mm -hmm. And then we shall swing at the big one with the battleaxe. That definitely hits. And the warhammer. Oh. Not so successful this time. Um, 
yeah. you don't quite get the level. Maybe just because you're a bit too close to it, you can't get the momentum get round to smack it. So yeah. Okay. Anything more? Uh, no, that's all. Guardian charges forward, charging and shouting, um, and sensing that the battle is over. He makes three attacks: an eighteen, a fourteen, and a two. So two of them hit. We are guarding them. We will be victorious. Not with f- rolls like that. He won't be. Um, does four damage in total with his two-handed hammer. Uh, the polar bear offers back. Well, it's white. I suppose that one is a polar bear. Um, it's going to bite him and claw him twice. Uh, I think that last claw actually might connect. Uh, yes. So even despite the fact take 17 points of damage. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it barely looks like it's a problem for him. Um, right. Adri. Are they all looking? They are looking very <laughs> beaten up, yeah. They ain't a lot left. They look very sorry. They're all burnt or singed or stabbed. They're bleeding. They're broken. Well, it's probably only fair to attempt to put them out of their misery. Um, so, three Eldritch Blasts, one at each of the bears. Okay. Um, I'll assume. The middle one was for the the big bear, the first one for the one closest, and the third one yeah. for the one furthest away. The, 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 so the two hit, yeah. the, the, the furthest away one doesn't. The bear's too busy moving to get into Kylon to be don't worry about that. So, yeah, two hit. Alrighty. Um, so the first one, she's going to have Genius Wrath on again. Yeah. So that's five thunder and force. As it's running towards Kylon, it just smacks in and it falls down, so it's down. You killed that one. Excellent. And the second one is six force. So that's on the big one. Um, let me change that. Yep, yep, wrong one. And then the big one, yeah. Okay, um, six. Yep. Okay, and it's slowed. Right. Uh, what's? Oh, okay. So, um, have I mixed up the tokens here? No, Erin. Is it her already? Um, she is just gonna stay put, do nothing. Ah, no, I haven't mixed up. I'm sorry, I thought I'd mix up tokens, but they're on top of each other. Right, that's cool. Whew, right, okay, okay, still flying. Uh, charges forward, dwarf at your side. And uh, Old Hilt makes three attacks. One, two, three. Oh, yes, there we go. Um, there's a staggering 11 points of damage. But still, he can drive in off his shouting, Get back, get back! Ildrain. I'm going to cast a Scorching Ray at the big one, which is a second level spell. And Ildri is also going to shout to um, Jarrah, Flame Seed. Um, Jarrah's initiative acts on my next 
like straight up directly after mine. So basically ranged weapon attack or I think it's a ranged magic attack. I can't quite remember. Anyway, it's basically going to fire on the big one as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both of those hit. Cool. Why did Scorching Ray not do... Anyway. Um, so it takes 2d6 of fire damage. I don't know if that... I like the word Scorching Ray in it all. Oh, wow, that was fantastically rolled. Eyes and laser down. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Wow. Okay. 13 Carson. for my turn. That's not terrible. That's all right. Again, they're down. They're almost out. Carsa. Uh, Carsa would like to turn to the big bear. Give it a lovely smile. Um, punch it in the face. Uh, but you'll, the damage will be lightning damage as opposed to bludgeoning because of draconic strike if I hit. One, two. Yep, both hit. Yeah, so, uh, can the first one also be a stunning strike? So, uh, DC 17 con save. Uh, con, it rolls a low number of five. Excellent, so it's stunned, so this attack would have an advantage on it, but I'll just leave it now. Slow down, stunned. Joy. Okay. <laughs> and so for my bonus action, I will use another key point uh -huh. uh, for Flurry of Blows so I can punch it twice more with my Lightning Fist. Go Except for now it. I have it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Both it. So 10 Lightning Damage. And 11 lightning damage. 33 points of damage. Okay. Yeah, and it's stunned. Right. That's still alive. Okay. Um, just because it can, and because it isn't slowed or anything, it's going to... It's going to lunge at Kylon, um, and it's going to take... Bring it on. It's going to take a bite at you. It's trying to rip you apart. It rolls 26. Shield. Okay. So it misses? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, 12 and a 12. So, yeah. They would, so you, you just jaws try and grasp you and you feel it around, but it's as it bites in your reactions are fast um, and it doesn't get the purchase on your leg that it was looking for um, that bear is stunned Kylon uh, okay uh, now that that one's moved into range we shall sword burst again so deck saves from both of them and advantage uh, the big should auto fail if it's stunned. If I remember stunned. Paralyzed. Well, that was paralyzed. Um. So, either way, what was your DC? 17. Okay. Yeah, automatically fail. Uh, stunned. Creature automatically fails strength and dex saving throws. Oh, wonderful. Very so, handy. Yes. Um, right. Well, come on then. The the damage is 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 final. How how do you want to? Um, I need to catch up with the production. There we go. How do you want to? How do you want to do this? How do you want to finish it? How do you want to roast these bears? How do you want to manage to get them uh, all dead? Uh. Kyle will just like kind of slam the butt of his battle axe into the ground and kind of spectral axe blades will slice into them. Uh, spectral right into kind of blades. Uh, does it leave the bodies in in parts or is it is it just um, slashing? Just kind of just it? kind of slashes into them and. Uh, okay. Uh, it leaves their faces in ribbons. But. Right then, yeah. Um, and immediately, you are victorious as the last of these bears 
are put to rest. Uh, Guardian immediately walks up to, to one. He pulls out a large knife and um, he um, stabs it right in and draws the blade down and pulls apart the fur. And he looks at it and he says, Aye, these ones, these'll do. And he looks around, we need to get these back. And then he goes to the big one um, and he does the same thing. And it's the size of this corpse on the ground. And he runs his knife down it and then you see him and he's like, no, 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 no. Not this one. This one, we're going to chuck off the other side. It can go back and down to the foot. We're not keeping this here. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you, all of you. <laughs> it seems, uh... Well, maybe we misjudged you just a little bit. Perhaps, uh... You're a wee bit more capable than you first appeared arriving in the snow. He looks up. It's getting heavier now. How are you enjoying it up here? Then just gives a massive little smile and says, I'm having a great time. Where's more bears? <laughs> Jara looks distinctly unamused and is sort of ruffling their feathers as the heat coming off them is kind of creating this weird sort of steamy water droplety type things so as they shake a little bit as they're hovering. <laughs> yeah. yeah, every so often the big bit of snow sort of evaporates and yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the guard guardian uh oh let me introduce you Oddhild, come here. Old man, get and you see this character um, with his with his fa his armor across his face. Aye, they're good, aren't they? You'll all do fine. You'll all do fine. <sighs> it's been a pleasure to battle, and um, I think we'll find there are quite a few more bears for you there. Don't go searching for them. You're more likely to die by falling down a crevasse than you are getting hit by one of these little pandas, eh? My goodness. I wonder. I wonder. And he, he, he goes over um, to, to the big one. Um, and he looks in the, the cut that was was made and his gauntlet, he sees his gauntlet, just, he reaches in into his body. Um, and he rummages about and he goes, his body goes right up to his arm and he's rummaging about inside it and you see him exerting his face and he's like um, and he says, aye no bloody wonder, look at the state of this and you see the, this, the, the, the heart type thing that he's brought out, this bit of his body he's brought out is actually glowing and as it hits it's warm in the snow, kind of like Jara is in the same way. Now this one's been touched by flame. Bloody mating with the bloody Hellforge, this one. Jesus, its parents must have been an abomination. We have sat too long twixt the ice and the heat. It's getting worse before it gets better. And now we've got the bloody dust to contend with. We're f not much chance, but <laughs> isn't it fun? And he chucks it away and you just see it land in a pile of snow and the snow just melts around it and steam evaporates. <sighs> well, we'll get people up here and we'll get these down. Safe to eat, you reckon, Guardian? Guardian's like, aye, aye, safe to eat. This'll keep us going for a while, not a problem. <sighs> it's been a pleasure. Um, Old Hill looks as every much as as delighted as Kylon is, and and walks off, um, back down the stairs past you all, nodding um, at you, smiling through his beard.
Um, yeah. what, what was wrong with the big one? Uh, the bear. I see there's a problem. Uh, the Hellforge. The beasts that roam there, they're all tainted by fire and flame and... Occasionally, the two cross. These must have fallen foul. What an abomination. Bears of fire and bears of ice. Uh, surprised they could tolerate one another. Long enough, eh? Not good. But at least when we're dealing with these things, and he kicks the other ones, uh, they're normal sized. And they die normally. These things here uh, taint everything that they touch. Their fire isn't natural. I wouldn't be surprised if some magic got involved here. Aye, well, well. Um, and the uh, yeah, guardian's disposition changes. Still, we're going to be eating for long enough. <sighs> and then yeah so uh, yeah you hear all, you see Old Hild going away you see Gardain, um he's managed to, to to sort of cut off one of the ears or something he's way down the stairs dinner time then eh come on let's go eat we'll get these sorted after it's not like they're going to rot in the heat You already see snow being into pile around him. He catches up with Odd And the two of them start chatting. Leaving the four of you amongst the corpses. Oh. How do you get? Shall we see if we can find some more? That was a good warm up. You can go high, can't you? Look up above. Perhaps we should go and have the meal our host was suggesting. We wouldn't want to wish to offend them by turning up our nose at their food or anything. Why not can they be? We killed their bears. It would be polite and warmer to go and get food. And I'm sure the pair of you, if you want to go hunting bears, can find locations of them, get more information from the dwarves. They said it was communal eating. Plenty of people to talk to to find out where to find more bears. I mean, the bears found us. I feel like they'd do it again. So I, I could just go and they'd find me. So full belly fighting, no belly fighting. You've convinced me. Let's go get food. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah, and so you pass through the doors and into the hall. And the great dwarven hospitality. It isn't a tavern, more a small hall. It's not the greatest, you know, dwarves build bigger, but understanding, of course, that this place has fallen by the wayside and they're making do with what they can. You still appreciate the fine food and the fine ale. That's brewed locally. The brewer is pointed out to you and um, you cheers. Um, and you do have a, a, an excellent, an excellent feast. As you're eating, the stories rumble on talk of time where Stone Shield was more than just an outpost. You hear tales of trade. You hear that the mines were once greatly able to provide enough of the wealth that was required to keep more people here. And as you hear the tales, you realise 
that as much as they're reminiscing upon what has happened and this decline, they still very much celebrate being here, being seen as the last. When you hear a strange word being said, and every now and again it gets muffled as the person next to the speaker is either hit or the subject has changed dramatically. Observers. And when you ask what it is, they don't tell you. It seems like there may well be secrets in Stone Shield that are yet to be given. The plight of observers, the scant resources available, the mines, the tale of two dragons, a city at the foot of Elskara. Well, you know, as a shadow, and as the operatives that you are, you're given leeway. You have a whole month before you have to get back. Maybe you could spend a bit of time and hang around. A day wouldn't hurt. There's been action here. And so you take up the hospitality, you find yourself in a good position, tired, full, and ready for sleep. Or, if you wish, a nighttime stroll on a deadly frozen mountain. We'll pick that up next week. <laughs>